Hello, I uh, hope you're having a blessed day. This is Jacob from uh, the Gospel of R.A.K. And uh, today we're going to dive into the Sabbath day and uh, basically how the church has done away with it, but Jesus as well as the prophets and everyone in the Old Testament kept the Sabbath as well as the Holy Days. Uh, my grandpa did a pretty thorough study on what Jesus was doing in his time as far as the Sabbath and Holy Days went and how it related back to the Old Testament and how we should still be doing those things and how Jesus didn't come to abolish those things but he came to fulfill them and made it so we should have known and should know today that we should still be doing these things. Also, we're going to jump right into it here. The title is Remember to Keep Holy the Sabbath Day. The summary, the law, the first five books of the Bible, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, contain God's commandments and his judgments based on those commandments. Jesus kept the commandments, and both he and his apostles after him taught their followers to keep the commandments. Sin is transgression of the law, or breaking any of the commandments or judgments contained in the law. Christians are not free to sin just because they are not under the law, but under grace. In fact, God says he is going to make a new covenant or agreement with us in which he says, I will put my laws upon their hearts, and upon their minds I will write them. The fourth of God's Ten Commandments, given to Moses by God on Mount Sinai, says, Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Christians are to keep holy the seventh Sabbath, each seventh day Sabbath each week, which currently is called by the pagan name Saturday. And if you don't know, it's he's referring to Saturn, or which is also another name for Zeus, which is a, a pagan name. We have <coughs> pagan names for all of our weekdays, as well as months. Uh, Christians are to keep the holy seven yearly Sabbaths, which occur during God's festival or feast days each year. The Sabbaths are to be celebrated from sundown the day before the Sabbath to sundown of the Sabbath. God says his weekly Sabbath is a sign between himself and his people in two respects. First, it is a sign that he created the universe, including the earth and man, in six days, and rested on the seventh day, thereby exposing the theory of evolution as one of the most deceitful hoaxes ever perpetrated on mankind by those who, while professing to be wise, have become fools. Second, it is a sign that he can make the Sabbath day holy, he can also make his people holy by forgiveness of their sins. Keeping the seventh day Sabbath holy means spending the day with God. We are to draw closer to God by worshiping, glorifying, praying to, and learning more about him on his holy day. We are not to divert our attention from God by doing our own will, whether that diversion involves work or play. Involvement in such diversions results in sacrilege, as if to say, using his holy day for secular non-religious activities, God specifically names some of these things we are not to do on his holy day, which is work, buy, sell, kindle a fire in our habitations, which is cooking, and carry any burdens out of our houses. God imposes a severe penalty for not keeping the seventh day holy. He imposes no such penalty for not keeping any of the other six days of the week holy. Substituting and worshiping on a day different from the seventh day Sabbath amounts to changing doctrine and worshiping God in vain, for it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrine the precepts of men. Be on God, on guard, for God explicitly says that if we do not have a love of the truth, he will send us a misleading influence, that we may believe falsehood, that all may be judged who have not believed the truth, but have preferred wickedness. Discussion. Number one, what is the law? The law was written by Moses and consists of the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 9, verses 24 through 26, as well as 29. And Moses wrote this law and delivered it to the priests and to all the ancients of Israel. Therefore, after Moses had wrote the words of his law in a volume and finished it, he commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book and put it inside of the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a testimony against you. For I know that after my death you will do wickedly, and will quickly turn aside from the way that I have commanded you. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 4. Moses commanded us a law. 
the inheritance of the multitude of Jacob. Uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 16 through 17 and 19. Jesus answered them and said, If anyone desires to do his will, he will know of the teaching, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Did not Moses give you the law? And none of you observed the law. Number two, what is sin? Sin is transgression of law, as if to say, not keeping God's commandments as written in the law. Leviticus chapter 5, verses 17 through 19. If anyone sin through ignorance, and do one of those things which by the law of the Lord are forbidden, and being guilty of sin understand his iniquity, he shall offer, and the priest shall pray for him, because he did it ignorantly, and it shall be forgiven him, because by mistake he trespassed against the Lord. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. All lawlessness is sin, and there is a sin unto death. The book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 20, through law comes the recognition of sin. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17 through 20, do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets, and this is Jesus speaking, I have not come to destroy but to fulfill. For amen I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, not one jot or one tittle shall be lost from the law till all things have been accomplished. Therefore, whoever does away with one of these least commandments, and so teaches men, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever carries them out and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you that unless your justice exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. I think it's a, that's a very important thing that Jesus is saying there. Do not abolish these commandments. Follow them. They're important. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, everyone who commits sin commits iniquity also, and sin is iniquity. Number 3, but haven't God's laws or commandments been done away? Weren't they nailed to the cross? It was not God's laws or commandments that were nailed to the cross. It was the decree against us that was hostile to us that was nailed to the cross. Colossians chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. In you, when you were dead by reason of your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought to life along with him, forgiving you all your sins, canceling the decree against us, which was hostile to us. Indeed, he has taken it completely away, nailing it to the cross. Far from doing away with his laws, God says, he is going to, a, to make a new covenant with us in which he is going to write his laws upon our hearts and upon our minds. <laughs> The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws upon their hearts and upon their minds. I will write them. He then adds, in their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. Number four. What then was the decree in item number three above, which by forgiveness of sins was canceled as if to say was nailed to the cross? The decree is found at Leviticus chapter 18, verses 4 and 5, which reads, You shall do my judgments, and shall observe my precepts, and shall walk in them. I am the Lord your God. Keep my laws and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. Here God has made the decree that if we keep his laws and judgments, or don't sin, we shall live and have eternal life. But the inverse of this decree must also be true, and that is, if we sin, we shall die, or as if to say, we shall earn eternal death. This is attested to by the following. The book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 22 and 23. But now set free from sin and become slaves to God. You have your fruit unto sanctification, and as your end, life everlasting. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is everlasting life, in Christ Jesus our Lord. By making us sinless, by forgiving us our sins, God has in effect canceled this inverse decree against us, condemning us to death for sinning, which indeed was hostile to us. Number five, there is a wicked one who will attempt to change God's laws and thereby cause mankind to sin by breaking God's real laws. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verses 25 through 27 and he shall speak words against the high one, and shall crush the saints of the Most High. And he shall think himself able to change times and laws, 
and they shall be delivered into his hand until a time, and times, and half a time. And judgment shall sit, that his power may be taken away, and be broken in pieces, and perish even to the end. And that the kingdom and power, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven, may be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all kings shall serve him, and shall obey him. Number six, God allows the wicked one to deceive supposed Christians, as if to say those who do not keep his commandments because they did not have a love of the truth that they might be saved. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 8-12 through 12. And then the wicked one will be revealed, and his coming is according to, to the working of Satan, and with all wicked deception to those who are perishing, for they have not received the love of truth that they might be saved. Therefore God sends them a misleading influence that they may believe falsehood, that all may be judged who have not believed the truth, but have preferred wickedness. Mark chapter 7, verses 6 through 9 and 13. But answering, he, or Jesus, said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain do they worship me, teaching as, jo as doctrine the precepts of men. For letting go the commandment of God, you hold fast the tradition of men. Well, do you nullify the commandment of God, that you keep your own tradition? You make void the commandment of God by your tradition. Book of Luke, chapter 18, verse 8. Yet when the Son of Man comes, will he find you think faith on the earth? This is a proverbial way of saying that not even supposed Christians will have true saving faith at the time of Christ's second coming. <laughs> Number seven, we are not free to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace. The book of Romans, chapter 6, Six, verse 15. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Number eight. Jesus not only kept the commandments, but he magnified or expanded the scope of what the commandments actually covered. The Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, as I also have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And it's really interesting how he makes that relation of love in keeping commandments. How do you show that you believe truly in the Creator, how, uh, your faith? And, and that is through not only the belief of Jesus and his life and what it meant to us and how it gave us an opportunity to be saved. Um, also, keeping the law shows God that we have true faith towards him and not just uh, whatever kind of faith that we Christians believe we have nowadays. Uh, the book of Matthew chapter 5 verses 21 22. You have heard that it is said to the ancients, you shall not kill, and that whoever shall kill shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother shall be liable to judgment. So that's Jesus adding to the commandments, not taking away. Uh, the book of Matthew, verse, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. You have heard that it is said to the ancients, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that anyone who so much as looks with lust at a woman has already committed adultery with her in his heart. That is him also adding to the commandments and not taking away. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 and 22. Unto this indeed you have been called, because Christ also has suffered for you leaving you an example that you may follow in his steps. Who did not sin, or who did no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Isaiah 53, 9, Because he has done no iniquity, neither was there deceit in his mouth. The, the relation from the Old, Old Testament to the New Testament um, is really nice there, as well as the remembrance of Jesus didn't sin. So what was sin back then, right? I mean, he kept all the commandments. He kept the feast days. He kept the Sabbath. He, he did those things. And uh, for some reason, we have come to believe that those were all abolished. But if that's the case, why would he do what he did? And not only that, but he was preparing for Passover right before he was nailed to the cross. So uh, I, I don't believe that he had any intention of this. I believe it's uh, all us being misled 
<clears throat> and I think it's very deceitful of the church. And I think that is part of the reason my grandpa went off and did his own thing is because he realized that we were letting go of all these things that God very much wants us to do still. Uh, number nine, Jesus taught his followers to keep the commandments. Uh, Matthew chapter 19, verses 16 through 19. And behold, a certain man came to him and said, Good master, what good work shall I do to have eternal life? He said to him, If you will enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, Which? And Jesus said, You shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> Book of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, 15, uh, verses 15, 21, 23 through 24. If you love me, keep my commandments. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. If anyone love me, he will keep my word, my commandments. He who does not love me does not keep my words. Number 10, Jesus' apostles preach the keeping of the commandments. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 19, circumcision does not matter in uncircumcision uncircumcision does not matter but the keeping of the commandments of god is what matters 1 timothy chapter 6 verses 13 through 14 i charge you in the sight of god who gives life to all things and in the sight of christ jesus who bore witness before pontius pilate to the good confession that you keep the commandment without stain blameless until the coming of our lord jesus christ 1 john chapter 2 verses 1 3 and 3 through 6 my dear children, these things I write to you in order that you may not sin. And by this, we can be sure that we know him if we keep his commandments. He who says that he knows him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But he who keeps his word, in him the love of God is truly perfected. And by this we know that we are in him. He who says that he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. 1 John chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. And whatever we ask, we shall receive from him, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of his Son, Christ Jesus, and love one another, even as he gave us commandment. And he who keeps his commandments abides in God, and God in him. And this we know, that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 through 3. In this we know that we love the children of God. We love God and do his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Number 11. A person is known by his enemies. Satan wages war against those who keep God's commandments, or these true Christians, not those who don't keep his commandments, or Christians in name only. Apocalypse chapter 12, verses, I'm sorry, verse 17, also Revelation, maybe in your Bible. And the dragon, or Satan, was angered at the woman and went away to wage war with the rest of her offspring, who keep the commandments of God and hold fast the testimony of Jesus. So the last book of the Bible, this is talking about the devil in the end times waging war against the people of God who keep the commandments of God. I think that's important. Why is he strictly going after these people? And these are God's true faith-believing Christians to me. So I think that's something we need to, we need to reconsider these laws. Uh, Twelve, God's saints, truly faithful, living Christians, keep his commandments and are the ones who are to receive his kingdom. Apocalypse chapter 14, verse 12. Here's the patience of the saints who keep the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. Book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 27. And that the kingdom and power and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven may be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all kings shall serve him and shall obey him. The book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. And after John had been delivered up, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 through 3 and 9 through 11. 
Dare any of you, having a matter against another, bring your case to be judged before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more worldly things, or do you not know that the unjust will not possess the kingdom of God? Do not err, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor the evil-tongued, nor the greedy will possess the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you have been washed, and you have been sanctified, and you have been justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit of our God. (laughs) Number 13, Jesus summarized the commandments in two great commandments. Book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. But the Pharisees, hearing that he had silenced the Sadducees, gathered together. And one of them, a doctor of the law, putting him to the test, asked him, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with your whole heart and with your whole soul and with your whole mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. <laughs> Very well said. Very well said. Uh, number 14. God expanded the two above great commandments into ten commandments. The ten commandments which God wrote in two tablets of stone and gave to Moses on Mount Sinai are found written at Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 17, and are simply expansions of the two great commandments. The first four verses, 1 through 11, pertain to loving God. The last six verses, 12 through 17, pertain to loving your neighbor. The remaining commandments, judgments, and precepts found in the law are further expansion of these Ten Commandments. He wasn't doing away with them. He was saying, in summary, these are the two things that you should get from these Ten Commandments, but don't stop doing them. Number 15, what is the fourth of the Ten Commandments God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. Remember that you keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days shall you labor, and shall do all your works. But on the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. You shall do no work on it, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your beast, nor the stranger that lives within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all things that are in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Number 16. Jesus kept the Sabbath as it was one of God's commandments. Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And he, Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And according to his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. Uh, Custom definition. A generally accepted practice or habit or convention. Um, Number 17, Jesus, when prophesying about his future or second coming, made reference to the Sabbath, implying that he will, that he still expected it to be celebrated in accordance with the commandment at the time of his return. Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 through 4 and 20 and 21. And as he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us when are these things to happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? And in answer, Jesus said to them, But pray that your flight may not be in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation such as not been from the beginning of the world until now, nor will be. Number 18. Jesus' followers kept the Sabbath immediately after he died. Book of Luke, chapter 23, verses 54 through 56, and chapter 24, verse 1. And it was the preparation day, and the Sabbath was drawing on. And the woman who had come with him, or Jesus, from Galilee, followed after, and beheld the tomb, (coughs) and how his body was laid. And they went back and prepared spices and ointments, and on the Sabbath they rested, in accordance with the commandment. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. Number 19. The Apostle Paul kept the Sabbath after Jesus died. (laughs) Book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 1 to 3. Now, after passing through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, 
where they where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as was his custom, went into them, and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and showing that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and that this is the Christ, even Jesus, whom I preach to you. The book of Acts chapter 18, verse 4. And he, Paul, would preach in the synagogue every Sabbath, bringing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and try to convince the Jews and the Greeks. Number 20. The Sabbath is a sign between God and his people in two respects. Number one, first it is a sign that God created the universe in six days and rested on the seventh day. The seventh day week we use, or the seven day week we use today was originated by God and points to the creation. Creation debunks the theory of evolution. Um, second, it is a sign that God can sanctify the seventh day, that he can also sanctify his people. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 1 through 3. Verses 1 through 3. So the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the furniture of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he has made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. And he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. <laughs> Exodus, chapter 31, verses 16 and 17. Let the children of Israel keep the Sabbath and celebrate it in their generations. It is an everlasting covenant between me and the children of Israel, and a perpetual sign. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and in the seventh he ceased from work. <laughs> Romans chapter 1 verse 22. For while professing to be wise, they had become fools. Exodus chapter 31 verse 13. Speak to the children of Israel, and you shall say to them, See that you keep my Sabbath, because it is a sign between me and you in your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctify you. 21. What does the word Sabbath mean? Shabbat, definition from Hebrew, means to rest or a time of rest. Number 22. What does the word holy mean? Holy definition, things dedicated, set apart for sacred usage of God, his works, dwelling place, attributes. Sacred definition, set apart for the service or worship of God, having a religious, not a profane character. <clears throat> Number 23, which day today is the seventh day Sabbath God gave to Moses? <laughs> the seventh day of the Jewish week from sundown on Friday until sundown on Saturday is the seventh day, set apart by Moses as a holy day of rest and worship commemorating the completion of the creation. Saturday, definition, the seventh and last day of the week. <laughs> Perfect. Number 24. What time of day should God's Sabbath be celebrated? Leviticus chapter 23, verses 26 through 27 and 32. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Upon the tenth day of the seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It is a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls beginning on the ninth day of the month. From evening until evening you shall celebrate your Sabbaths. Number 25, God imposes a penalty for not keeping the seventh day holy. Not so, I'm sorry, no such penalty is imposed for not keeping any of the other six days. Exodus chapter 31, verses 14 and 15, Keep you my Sabbath, for it is holy unto you. He that shall profane it shall be put to death. He that shall do any work in it, his soul shall perish out of the midst of his people. Six days shall you do work, and the seventh day is the Sabbath, the rest, hol the rest holy to the land. Everyone that shall do any work on this day shall die. Profane definition. Secular, not connected with religion or religious matters. Irreverence toward God or holy things, not hallowed or consecrated. Uh, synonyms would be secular, godless, ungodly, impious, unholy, unhallowed, unsanctified, irreverent, irreligious, temporal, worldly. Number 26. God says we are to use the Sabbath to glorify him and not do our own will, but his will. Book of Isaiah, chapter 58, 13, and 14. If you turn away your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your own will in my holy day, and call the Sabbath delightful, and the holy of the Lord glorious, and glorify him, while you do not your own ways, and your own will is not found to speak a word, then shall you be delighted in the Lord, and I will lift you up above the high places of the earth, and will feed you in the, inher in the inheritance of Jacob your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. 
Isaiah chapter 43, verse 7. And everyone that calls upon my name, I have created him for my glory. I have formed him and made him. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Some scriptural examples, oh, this is 27, some scriptural examples of not doing your own will on the Sabbath day. It's from Exodus chapters 12, verses 14 and 16. And this day shall be for a memorial to you, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord in your generations with an everlasting observance. Everlasting observance. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. And the first day there shall be no leaven in your house. Whosoever shall eat anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall perish out of Israel. The first day shall be holy and solemn, and the seventh day shall be kept with the like solemnity. You shall do no work in them except those things that belong to eating. Exodus chapter 35, verse 3. You shall kindle no fire in any of your habitations on the Sabbath day. 2 Ezra chapter 13, verses 15 through 18. In those days, I, Nehemiah, saw in Judah some treading the presses on the Sabbath, and carrying sheaves, and lading asses with wine, and grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, and bringing them into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I charged them that they should sell on a day on which it was lawful to sell. Some Tyrians also dwelt there who brought fish and all manner of wares, and they sold them on the Sabbath to the children of Judah in Jerusalem. And I rebuked the chief men of Judah and said to them, What is this evil thing that you are doing, profaning the Sabbath day? Did not our fathers do these things, and our God brought all this evil upon us and upon this city? And you bring more wrath upon Israel by violating the Sabbath. To Ezra chapter 10 verse 31. And if the people of the land bring in things to sell, or any things for use, to sell them on the Sabbath day, then we would not buy them on the Sabbath day or on the holy day. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 21 and 22. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to your souls, and carry no burdens on the Sabbath day, and bring them not in by the gates of Jerusalem, and do not bring burdens out of your houses on the Sabbath day, neither do you any work. Sanctify the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. Number 28. We commit sacrilege when we don't keep the Sabbath day holy. The holy Sabbath is to be spent with God, doing godly things. We commit sacrilege when we use it to do our own will. The book of Romans, chapter 2, verse 22. You who do abominate idols, do you commit sacrilege? Sacrilege definition the crime of appropriating to oneself or to secular use what is consecrated to God or religion. Secular definition, pertaining to the world or to things not spiritual or sacred, disassociated from a religious teaching or principles, not devoted to sacred or religious use. Worldly. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1-2 through two and 4-5. through five. But know this, that in the last days, dangerous times will come. Men will be lovers of self, loving pleasure more than God, having a resemblance indeed of piety, but disowning its power, avoid these. Number 29, God ordained seven feast day Sabbaths to keep, or to be kept holy, in addition to 52 weekly Sabbaths each year. Ecclesiasticus chapter 33, verses seven through 10. Why does one day excel another, and one light another, and one year another year? when all come of the sun. By the knowledge of the Lord, they were distinguished, the sun being made and keeping his commandment. And he ordered the seasons and hol holidays, or the holy days of them, and in them they celebrated festivals or feasts at an hour. Some of them God made high in great days, and some of them he put in the number of ordinary days. The feast days are recorded in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Leviticus 23, verses 1-2, through two, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and shall say to them, These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall call holy. Leviticus 23, 3-4, the weekly Sabbath. 5-8 uh, is the feast of Passover in the days of unleavened bread. Leviticus 23, 10, 15, 16, and 21 is the feast of Pentecost. 
when you shall have entered into the land which I will give you and, and shall reap your corn, you shall bring sheaves of ears, the first fruits of your harvest, to the priest. You shall count, therefore, the morrow after the Sabbath, wherein you offer the sheaf of the first fruits seven full weeks, even unto the morrow after the seventh week be expired, that is to say, fifty days, and you shall call this day most solemn and most holy. You shall do no servile work therein. It shall be an everlasting ordinance in all, you dwell, in all your dwellings and generations. The Feast of Trumpet, Trumpets is in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 24 through 25. The seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall keep a Sabbath, a memorial, with a sound of trumpets, and it shall be called holy. You shall do no servile work therein. Um, the Feast of Atonement, or the Day of Atonement, which we went over that, is in Leviticus 23, 27, 29 through 30, and 32. The Feast of Tabernacles, um, which is two Sabbaths, from the 15th day of this same seventh month shall be kept the Feast of Tabernacles, seven days to the Lord. The first day shall be called most solemn and most holy. You shall do no servile work therein. The eighth day shall also be most solemn and most holy. You shall do no servile work therein. And on the first and the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. That is the day of rest. Number 30. Just as God's seventh day Sabbath has not been done away, neither has his feast days. Zechariah chapter 17 verses 16 through 18. And all they that shall be left of all nations that came against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year to adore the king the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And it shall come to pass, that he that shall not go up of the families of the land to Jerusalem to adore the king, the Lord of hosts, there shall be no rain unto them. And if the family of Egypt go not up nor come, neither shall it be upon them. Um, he has a note here that this prophecy has not come to pass yet, but is to be fulfilled soon. Um, God clearly shows that he expects his Feast of Tabernacles to be celebrated at that time, which is end times, and by extension, the rest of his feast days. Number 31, will mankind try to abolish God's festival days, just as they have tried to abolish the seventh day Sabbath and other of, of God's laws? The book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 8, they said in their heart, the whole kindred of them together, let us abolish all the festival days of God from the land. Um, he has a legend here that all these quotes are from his Dewey Remus Bible. Uh, that is it, the 1950 uh, J.P. Kennedy and Sons uh, with the Francis Cardinal Spellman Archbishop as the underwriter. Um, same Bible I use as well. Um, you can look it up. It's pretty similar to pretty much anything else. Um, it's worded a little more old-fashioned, but it's just kind of the way I learned, so it's not a big deal to me. Uh, I think that this paper in general is a great remembrance of the things that we should be doing as Christians now and how there's no abolishment of the law that was not nailed to the cross. What was nailed to the cross was the chance of not being able to repent for our sins and Jesus gave that um, with his death. It is related back to the Old Testament and I think that's the biggest part is we have to remember that the New Testament is what we have. It's the newest thing we have, and it's very important, but we have to remember that it's all based off of what was written in those first five books of the Bible, which is the Torah, which is the law. Um, we need to look back to that and remember what God wanted us to do because he never had any plans to abolish these commandments. Um, I particularly wanted to choose the Sabbath day because I f it's one of the main things that I think needs to be focused on by Christians. Um, as well as the feast days. But this was one of my grandpa's papers that he thoroughly went into uh, why we should still be doing these things and that there really is no good reason to stop them. Uh, I thank you all for your time. I hope you all have a blessed day. I thank you for all of the support, likes, um, subscribers that you've all given me or added to uh, the Gospel of R.A.K.'s channel. Uh, we are going to continue to put out his word um, and try to help as many people as we can to provide the truth through the word of God, which is the Bible. I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless.